which is about uh, mostly economic transformation of economic structure of Turkey as it is related to the social structure, to cultural, political structure. No? Because, you know, economic uh, structure is uh, very much uh, influential, uh, influencing social structure, cultural structure, political structure. Uh, although there is, of course, a reciprocal interrelationship between economic structure and social cultural uh, structure. But uh, the focus today will be uh, on economic structure mostly. That is, I will focus on uh, the type of economic development, the model of economic development that Turkey adopted between uh, 1920s to up to 1980. 1980. Now, I will take up post-1980 economic developments in another, in another week in the future. Uh, for today, I will focus mostly on post-Second World War because I focused last semester uh, the, uh, you know, the last 10 years, 20 years of Ottoman and first 20 years of uh, Republican period, but still I will talk about that, uh, of course. Actually, I started doing this uh, last week, if you remember. Uh, I was talking about periodizations of Turkish modernization. You know, not only an economic periodization of economic development or uh, cultural development or political development. Mostly, Turkey, Turkey's periodization is in terms of economic development and political development. But as you remember from last week, I did in terms of economic development, in terms of political development, in terms of cultural, religious change, in terms of secularization, in terms of uh, devaluations in the economic structure, into, you know, uh, I said, for example, we can have a periodization in terms of musical development. You know, uh, the classical Ottoman music when it was uh, uh, the, the, uh, the country music or uh, from the from Anatolia, the the collection of uh, and then uh, compositions of classical Turkish music and then contemporary pop music, you know, that, uh, one can do an, a periodization of musical development in, and many others. Uh, okay, now I will go back now to the economic uh, periodization. Uh, let me share first the beginning of, I mean, the plan of this, uh, this lecture, uh, the material that you will be exposed that is ready for you. Uh, you can open that page actually, but let me show it so that you know you will you will also uh, go there. Now, in order to do that, let me share my screen with you, as I usually do, uh, and then uh, choose uh, my content of the course page in Blackboard. Now I am doing that now at uh, at present. Now, I did that already. Uh, and uh, OK, now uh, let me go to the beginning. OK, now uh, the title, as you see, is Turkish model of statism, mixed economy, and import substitution industrialization. That will be what I am going to talk today. Now, I will start, start with. Uh, Hirschman's article published in 1968. Uh, uh, I will I will share this with you so that you can access the article itself. Uh, now, the political economy of import substitution 
industrialization in Latin America. The general uh, idea of import substitution now in 1968, you know, uh, I will come to Chalar Keider. Chalar Keider uses uh, Hirschman's article too. Now, secondly, okay, now, secondly, I will go into, after this very brief summary, uh, a cop I copied from last week the, uh, the periodization uh, between 1923 up to 1980. Remember, uh, that you see here, uh, you see it here already. Let me see. Uh, I hope you are, you see this, let me make it larger, maybe a little bit, uh, so you can see it. Uh, now you can also see the, the beginning. Uh, huh, look, the, the one copied from last week part is important here. Uh, so liberal period, 1923-29, but then there is 1929 uh, the world crisis of capitalism, which influenced all countries uh, and mostly Turkey and all countries actually, uh, I shouldn't say mostly. So Turkey, Turkish newly established nation state adopted a statist approach to development, a statist approach, which a centralized state, state uh, hegemonizing the society, uh, uh, you know, almost absolving society within the state, but establishing so many economic enterprises, economic enterprises, and there is a first devaluation. When one dollar was two Turkish lira, you know, Turkish lira uh, before six zeros were thrown out. Uh, six zeros. So if you, uh, so two million uh, Turkish lira. Uh, no, no, two Turkish lira. Okay, now. Uh, uh, and then liberalization of status period, which is from 1945 to 1960, especially from 1950 to 1960, the second period. And there's a devaluate, two devaluations, one in 1946 the other in 1958. Now, uh, I shared Celebi's article uh, about these devaluations. And then uh, the planned mixed economy period, 1960 to 1980. You know, there are, of course, post-1980 period, but I will not go into that. Now, in this period, 60 to 80 period, there are devaluations in 1970 and 79. And then uh, in 1970, the beginning of new period, actually import substitution industrialization is left in the past and export oriented industrialization started with this devaluation in 1980. Okay, now this was uh, from, uh, 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 from last week. Okay, let me uh, continue. Uh, and then uh, I will go briefly into this article by William Hale. Uh, now the name of the uh, article is uh, Ideology and Economic Development in Turkey. Ideology and Econ uh, Development in Turkey between 1930 and 1945. Now this is a good article, you know, uh, published in 1980. Uh, Kedar also gives a reference to it, but our main uh, book in this uh, issue is Kedar's 1987 book, which we used extensively uh, last semester as well, State and Class. Now, in chapter five of State and Class, uh, uh, Kedar focuses on the relationship between state and capital. In the meantime, here, there is a final exam question. Discuss Turkish model of statism and mixed economy as part of third world developmentalism. 
And in this chapter, uh, there is the answer to this. And then uh, here I go to uh, major restoration, comparison of major restoration and Turkish Republican bureaucracy, etc. Uh, I will come back to this. Uh, no, th there are all these chapters I will summarize. Even I will go into uh, a film uh, or actually a serial uh, in Netflix. And then I will go into chapter seven. And that is, again, a final exam question. Discuss dynamics of imports, substitution, industrialization, and dynamics of economic, political, ideological crises. And a, a sub question social integration and system integration of Habermasian sociology to explain crisis dynamics. Okay. And then uh, chapter eight uh, the crisis. The, uh, I will come uh, to that. Uh, let me, uh, you see, the all uh, uh, parts. Okay, I, uh, okay, now, uh, Çağlar Keydar and Seer and Şevket Pamuk starts. Şevket Pamuk, Prices in Ottoman Empire. We discussed this article last semester. Now, today, I will, the last article I will talk is, uh, uh, again, Şevket Pamuk, not Orhan Pamuk, Orhan Pamuk, uh, novel. He is a novelist. He is a literature man. Whereas his brother, older brother actually, Shevket Pamuk, is a, a socio-economic and historian of social and economic history of Turkey, of, of Turkish modernization. And so last semester we talked uh, his uh, article prices in Ottoman Empire, which was 14th, between 1450, the middle of 15th century, to 1913, before the World War I. Now, this second article that I will talk today is starts from 1914 to 2000. Okay, uh, so I will finish uh, with this. Now, let me send this and let me come face to face uh, with you uh, with you and let me go back to uh, uh, Hirschman's article political economy of import substitution industrialization in Latin America now what is the relevance of this I mean we are uh, teacher uh, uh, Mr. Akshit you we are talking about Turkish economic history, Turkish social structure. Why are we? Are you presenting us a summary of Hirschman's article on Latin America? Now, it is important because back in 1968, when I was a student in Middle East Technical University, I was taking uh, economic history of economic development and economic growth in Turkey from economics department and there we were face to face with Hirschman and Hirschman, Hirschman's article on import substitution industrialization and how import substitution industrialization uh, from Latin American experience uh, leads towards in, in the beginning, in the beginning, there is an easy period. Now, uh, that is really in 40s and 50s. The beginning of 50s is easy, even up to 1960, easy uh, import substitution industrialization in Turkey. But from uh, 1960, especially from 1970 onward uh, to 1980, the last decade of import substitution industrialization is full of crisis crisis dynamics. And in 1968, this is being discussed uh, uh, by Hirschman. He says that uh, there are three basic criticisms of import substitution industrialization 
in Latin America. Uh, and let me just summarize them. The first one is, uh, now it says, yani he says that import substitution and is, uh, is fine, will we'll get stuck. Now, stuck is in quotation marks, will be blocked, blocked uh, after its first successes. Uh, after its first successes. And that is exhaustion of easy import substitution opportunities. Exhaustion. Okay, now it is finished. The easy import substitution uh, is finished. You know, before import substitution, basic materials and industry was being imported from uh, European countries, uh, from England, from France, from Germany, etc., etc. With import substitution, those materials start being produced in Turkey and substitution instead of importing, producing them in Turkey and blocking the import of those goods, blocking import of those goods. Uh, for example, in the first years of uh, import substitution, industrialization, producing cars uh, uh, like Fiat, or uh, uh, what is the uh, other one that, that is produced by OYAK? Uh, you know, uh, in, uh, importation of foreign foreign cars was blocked. Uh, you know, it was high uh, uh, high taxes. You know, it actually it is still high taxes, but at that time it was uh, further more. You know, it was almost walls. You know, there were so protecting protecting import substitution uh, industrial establishments protecting them and allowing them to establish monopolies or oligopolies really uh, the, the easy easy import substitution period the second criticism hirschman says uh, that is leveled against import substitution industrialization is a uh, import substitution industry is affected by congenital inability an uh, inability that is from the beginning it is uh, it is determined to be uh, 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 finally blocked uh, not able to go any further uh, because uh, it has a congenital inability to move into export uh, oriented development export markets because in order to have uh, you know to protect a, a import uh, substitution industries establishments uh, investments uh, it is the focus is on production for the home market for the home market not for uh, outside markets other countries you know, other countries usually in during that that period, exports are agricultural goods, not industrial goods. Now, towards the end of uh, not, during 1970s, especially after 1980s, you know, the export sector, you know, had a, a new uh, opening. Uh, actually, 1980 reforms that opened Turkish economy to global economy. Uh, after that opening, uh, uh, exports of industrial goods uh, started. Uh, we will come to that uh, in the following weeks. Okay, the third one Hirschman talked about is uh, this import substitution industries uh, and employment. Employment. Now, uh, it is not a solution. Now, Latin American experience uh, told us that uh, unemployment, it is not a solution to unemployment. Although, although we should admit that in the Turkish case, import substitution industrialization, especially the established industrial sector in Istanbul, Izmir, eventually Bursa and Adana, you know, big, uh, big industrial establishments, uh, the labor, employed there became eventually uh, skilled labor, 
skilled labor and uh, labor class, labor class, working class entered into the political balances of Turkish uh, political life, political and social life. So actually, although it was not a solution for the unemployment problem, but it contributed to the development of uh, uh, a working class. And especially in 1960, uh, new constitution, uh, the blocks blocking uh, uh, unionization uh, was uh, opened, uh, democratization, uh, democratization, and there was an organized labor class, working class uh, in Turkey, to which import substitution contributed. But unfortunately, during uh, 90s, uh, and especially, uh, we will come to that, 2001 uh, devaluation and uh, crisis, uh, eventually the global capital uh, eroded, eroded this uh, organized work, the basis, the basis of organized working class. Okay, now, this is Hirsch, Hirschman. Uh, I finished the summarizing of Hirschman. You can read if you are interested about Latin America, which you can, uh, you can uh, go into uh, into details. Uh, okay, now I will come to uh, statism, uh, statism, because uh, the first period of Turkish development model is a statist model, really, uh, from starting from 1930 onward. In 1934, a first five-year plan. Uh, is uh, is adopted by the government, uh, a planned economy. So in terms of this first five-year plan, you know, developing a plan, first five-year plan, there's an influence of Soviet socialist uh, countries, the influence from there. But Kedar in this chapter uh, goes into uh, the Italian example, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, uh, and German, you know, the, uh, now, so the debate is this, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the development of statist model of development in Turkey, uh, which one was more influential? The fascist model of Italy, Germany, Spain, or even Japan, uh, Japan, or uh, the socialist model, the socialist model of uh, Soviet socialist republics huh? in the period. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is the debate. Now, uh, uh, now uh, as an answer to this debate, uh, Chalar Kedar says that Italy was influential. For example, uh, many laws uh, were adopted from uh, from Italy. Now, remember, in Italy, Mussolini came to power in 1922. 22. So by 1930s, there was already, you know, 10, 15 years of uh, fasc fascist hegemony in Italy, and and Turkey adopted, uh, 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 for example, the basic uh, rights. Code, uh, uh, Medeni Canon, the, the civil uh, civil code, civil law uh, from Italy. Uh, of course, it was uh, modified, but uh, uh, that was the uh, main model. So, uh, but uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk was never like Mussolini or Hitler or uh, like in in Spain. Uh, what was the name of the general? I forgot. Uh, no, uh, he never he never uh, wait, may, uh, gives speeches like Hitler did or Mussolini did. You know, he was not a a fascist uh, dictator like. No, he was he adopted a statist economic development model, uh, and in the period in that period, the models were. 
on the one hand, Italy, Germany, Spain, and on the other, Soviet Socialist Republics. So it was uh, both were influential. Now, I think that uh, Soviet socialist model was more influential, especially for me, uh, the five-year plan uh, and other uh, other developments is an example, I mean, is is the proof for me. And there are others, other uh, historians of Tur Turkish modernization who says that uh, the Soviet mo model was more influential. So this is a debate, I mean, uh, it, it, you need historical research, historical sociological research. Now, before going further, I will go back to last semester. Now, remember, last semester, I compared uh, major restoration and Turkish Republican uh, bureaucracy. Now, in major restoration uh, or development, and industrial, industrialization after major restoration in Japan, uh, the bureaucracy there uh, and bureaucracy in Turkish Republican period and also in Ottoman period. Now, in both bureaucracies uh, uh, were independent or autonomous of the class structure in the country and especially of autonomous of agricultural class structure. Now, uh, both uh, uh, Turkey, uh, especially in, in comparison to Latin America, uh, never had a landed, uh, landed oligarchy, landed oligarchy. Now, uh, in terms of bureaucracy being autonomous from agricultural classes, uh, Meiji, Japan, and uh, uh, Turkey, Turkish Republican period is very similar and different from Latin America. Yet, uh, Japan and Turkey also diverge because in Japan, bureaucracy encouraged privatization in land or, or private capitalist development in agriculture, whereas, whereas Turkish bureaucracy in Ottoman period and in the Republican period, through uh, support policies, uh, uh, prevented development of large land ownership. Or even if there were large land ownership, and in future uh, I will show my own studies, uh, that is, uh, there are my own studies, where some villages start with large land ownership, and then how land is uh, through market forces and through state policies are divided into smaller lands. Uh, so the, uh, the large capitalist farms uh, are few in Turkey. Although recently, maybe with globalization, uh, uh, we have to do research whether uh, new ones are uh, emerging. Uh, so in the case of uh, Japan, uh, capitalist development uh, in agriculture and, and hence uh, uh, surplus value that's extracted from agriculture and transferred to industry, okay? Now, this relationship was such that an industrial revolution took place in Japan, in Japan. Whereas in Turkey, we didn't have an industrial revolution. But instead, but instead, we had a gradual development of import substitution uh, and later uh, export oriented. Import substitution, or, and first status, later import substitution and mixed economy, and thirdly, export oriented industrialization in Turkey, but uh, it didn't have a leap forward, uh, a jump like uh, in Japan, or although uh, started later, uh, like in South Korea. You know, in Korea too, there was a fast industrial develop development, almost like an industrial revolution. Whereas 
unfortunately, uh, we didn't have it. Okay, now, uh, in 1940s, uh, during the war, uh, uh, there was uh, uh, really, uh, 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 now, uh, uh, difficulties in uh, uh, in economic investment, etc. You know the, the war conditions and emerging from uh, first the First World War and later, secondly, Second World War and in between, in between the two. Now uh, about the between in between the two, uh, I already talked about, but uh, I left one thing, one more uh, argument. Now, for Turkish uh, economic development, uh, there's another debate, like whether Italy, uh, Italian fascism, or uh, Soviet socialist social, social, socialism was more effective in developing a model, a status model, and, there, and later a mixed economy model, especially after 1960. Okay, now, uh, there's also this debate whether Turkish development was uh, capitalist, socialist. No, it was not socialist, we know that. Uh, now, the debate is whether it is capitalist or non-capitalist non third way. So neither capitalist nor socialist, but uh, non-capitalist development. But now, there, uh, my uh, evaluation is that now, nowadays, especially after 1990, uh, disintegration of Soviet model, Soviet socialist model, now it is being discussed that even Soviet socialist model was not exactly capitalist, I mean, was not exactly socialist. There were capitalist elements which eventually led to disintegration of socialist organization, and there took place a capitalist transition into capitalist development in all post-Soviet countries, including uh, Russian Federation and uh, Turkish republics, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, all those uh, countries. Uh, so uh, I will say that, although uh, especially from 1930s up to 1945, uh, uh, the uh, private uh, enterprise, private enterprise, enterprise was not very strong because uh, uh, during First World War, uh, bourgeoisie in Turkey, especially non-Muslim bourgeoisie, the Greek, Jewish, uh, Armenian bourgeoisie. Uh, left the country, uh, uh, most of them, most of them left. So the remaining, remaining uh, Muslim uh, Turkish uh, bourgeoisie was weak. So in, nine, in between 1923 and 1929, uh, in the, that's the private capitalist period, there was not much uh, uh, development. So, and especially after the, the world uh, crisis of capitalism, 1929 depression, uh, statism was being adopted. Now, during status period, uh, state economic enterprises were established. So many of them, the banks like Sumer Bank, Eti Bank, uh, in, in addition to, you know, uh, how many year old from the middle of the 19th century, Zirat Bank as an agricultural bank. And again, during the, the Republican period, uh, uh, Turkey Ish Bank as a uh, Turkish uh, work uh, bank, uh, etc. You know, all these banks uh, financed this uh, state enterprises industri industrialization through state enterprises. Uh, you see, the uh, first five-year industrialization plan, its realization depended on investments of these uh, uh, 
these enterprises, state enterprises, and up to uh, 1980. Now, after 1980, uh, waves of privatization, until today, really, you know, there are few state enterprises are left. Even them is being discussed whether they should be also privatized. Uh, you know, the, the globalization uh, in the global period, uh, there was then pressure uh, from world uh, capitalistic system dynamics to privatize to privatize uh, all state uh, enterprises. Anyway, I will come uh, to that later. Now, uh, in spite of that, in 1940, you know, uh, in 1940, uh, only, you, know, you see, most of, no, it's not in spite of that. Uh, because of that, let's say, because of this uh, state enterprises being the dominant sector in the industrialization, most of the workers were employed by them. 75% of industrial workers uh, were employed by state economic enterprises. Now, this is from, uh, uh, from KDAR, uh, the state and class, that book, uh, page 103. Huh? Uh, only 20, in 1939, only 25% of industrial workers were employed by private sector. Okay? Now, uh, now, if we go, but gradually though, private enterprise increased from 25% to more and more. Uh, now, also here, there's an observation by Chalar Kedar that uh, the step, those founders of private firms, industrial uh, firms or uh, uh, service uh, or mixed, you know, those firms were mostly bureaucrats from uh, from state, especially those who were experienced in uh, uh, economic state economic uh, enterprises, SEE. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, 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 this one uh, I will uh, now I will go to. Uh, to the analysis of Kedar. Now, Kedar says that uh, now towards uh, 40s, the middle of 40s, now the end of Second World War, uh, Turkey did not join uh, Second World War, as you remember, but especially during the war, private bourgeoisie, private sector uh, uh, became more and more influential and uh, uh, and uh, so between bureaucracy and bourgeoisie uh, there was uh, a, a struggle a struggle uh, you know uh, bureaucracy uh, should be should bureaucracy give up the dominance that it enjoyed up to that point and bourgeoisie, which was subordinate to bureaucracy uh, up to a certain point, now didn't want that uh, subordination and, and uh, wanted more economy for autonomy, more autonomy. And post Second World War uh, world, world economic world, uh, world as a whole, uh, in the first world, uh, especially in Europe and in the United States, there was uh, now more uh, uh, influence from outside uh, to, to give up uh, for bureaucracy, uh, to give up uh, uh, bureaucracy's dominance over the economic system. So you see, now, if uh, those of you who, have, who had Habermas in the second year uh, and also in the fourth year, uh, you know, for Habermas, there are two uh, in developed uh, society, in European societies, uh, economic system 
and uh, a political system. Now, uh, the logic of the two are different. You know, the logic of economic system is market dynamics. Uh, you know, it has kind of autonomy. And the logic of political system is power dynamics. Uh, power dynamics and market dynamics, you know, uh, the struggle uh, between the two, not only in Turkey, but in Latin American countries, uh, in Argentina or uh, in Chile and in other countries. Uh, but now when you, uh, for example, comp uh, uh, compare Latin American and Turkish case again, in Latin America, uh, foreign capital is investment uh, was very dominant. Whereas in Turkey, until post-1980 period, uh, investment of foreign capital was blocked. You know, the status as well as import substitution, uh, industrialization dynamics uh, blocked uh, investment of foreign capital. Only after 1980 uh, reforms uh, or uh, coup d'etat uh, and uh, as import substitution industrialization was was left as a model, uh, there was uh, uh, foreign capital. Whereas in Brazil or in uh, in Argentina, there was substantial uh, American capital uh, and foreign. Uh, other foreign capital. Uh, okay, so uh, we have to keep that in mind. And uh, now, uh, at this point, I will talk about how 1950 elections, in 1950 elections, uh, the uh, single party regime of Republican People's Party were defeated in the elections and democratic party came to power now what are the uh, what are the dynamics now the following are uh, uh, the, some of the dynamics that uh, uh, that Kader notes and you can read them for example in the pages 100 from 110 to 115 now especially during the war Second World War, uh, the government of uh, you know the uh, Repu Republican People's Party dominated government put again 10% tax on uh, on peasantry, 10% tax, uh, which was eliminated uh, in 1924. I think it was eliminated, and hence you know there was an alliance between bureaucracy and peasantry. Huh? Now, that alliance lasted until 1940s. But during first half of 1940s, the war years, and the war years, uh, Republican People's Party dominant government put taxes on, uh, uh, on peasantry, on farmers, uh, and a forced delivery of designated amount of grain, wheat or barley or or what whatever you know, as if uh, you know it was uh, uh, in Soviet Union, for example, the agrarian sector. Uh, it was you know there was a uh, collectivization and you know this designated amount of grain. But in Turkey, there is no you know, uh, collective ownership, although there are some state farms, but there was a designated amount of grain that farmers should uh, turn over uh, to the government. Now, this alienated peasantry uh, uh, from uh, 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 from people's, uh, Republican People's Party government. Now, for example, I have here uh, my, my childhood memory. So, you know, this should be even, uh, you know, uh, I am born in 1945-46. I don't know exactly, uh, uh, although officially uh, 1946, 
February. Uh, uh, but I have the memory, I think around 49 maybe, uh, uh, that the tax collectors came to the village and uh, you know they will confiscate uh, uh, you know if if you have uh, so many sheep or goat or drought animals uh, they will take some of them as tax so me and my uh, my brother i remember taking our uh, i mean how many sheep maybe we had four or five sheep uh, two or three uh, goat two or three uh, you know cow and uh, oxen uh, taking them into the fields into the valleys and hiding them so that they will not be uh, confiscated huh? now this is uh, this is really uh, uh, alienated uh, peasantry and especially when there was uh, you know a crime committed by the by the farmers by the peasants how the gendarme came and uh, uh, caught uh, the suspected criminal and taking to the uh, district uh, court uh, uh, also they were not behaving nicely you know i remember stories that uh, even uh, gendarme forced the suspected criminal to get it, to carry them over their back you know these kind of things anyway uh, this is uh, uh, the the alienation between uh, bureaucracy uh, the republican people's uh, party dominant bureaucracy and peasantry but also the balance between uh, bureaucracy and bourgeoisie uh, you know it was uh, good you know there was a working balance between them during 30s and during 40s actually the bureaucracy was opening uh, the horizons for the development of private capital for the bourgeoisie uh, but again uh, uh, during uh, the war and just before for example the law of national defense and especially uh, the wealth levy, the wealth levy in 1942 uh, damaged. Uh, now this is a quote again from uh, Charles Arkader, page 113. Damaged business confidence, bureaucracy, and bourgeoisie alliance was damaged, uh, and uh, so losing peasantry and the confidence of uh, uh, bourgeoisie uh, in 1950 uh, with an lines, landslide victory, Democratic Party won the elections. Uh, so uh, now in, in page 115, Charles Keydar says, bureaucracy underestimated the power of bourgeoisie, the power of bourgeoisie, and especially non-Muslim bourgeoisie and especially the Jewish bourgeoisie. Now, at this point, uh, I will give a break and show you uh, the, the fragment, intro, introductory fragment of a serial, uh, of a serial, uh, just a minute. Uh, now, uh, let me share my screen with you uh, and here and then here I will go and continue. Now, let me ask you, how many of you uh, watched this serial? Can you just show me with this, uh, with this uh, hand raising? Huh? This hand raising, Gülben, okay. And who else? And Emma, you started, okay. And Zahra, you also watched it seems. Yes, who else? Yonja, also Yonja. Okay, so uh, you see, this is uh, movies about uh, the Turkish history, you know, 
This serial tells about 1940s and 1950s so well, you know, it is alive. It is historical sociology in the form of film, really. Uh, so there are similar films, uh, you know, Turkish film industry is, I think, is successful in depicting Turkish social life uh, from uh, maybe not 50s films, but from 60s onwards, you know, there are more and more social, the, the social component of the films are increasing. Uh, so I think you will, uh, you will find uh, good films and I will allow you to show a fragment from that film during your presentation. That will be uh, really nice. Uh, so after 14 students in this class, uh, we have uh, how many? Almost, almost 14, 13 of you are here. Really, I congratulate, congratulate you. After 14 students, or 15 maybe, 13 of them are here. I will cry. No, I won't. I am I'm sure you are. This class is a really good class. Uh, now, with this, with this motivation from you, I will continue uh, my, uh, my lecture. Uh, let me go back now to Kedar, this time chapter seven. Now, chapter seven is titled as Political Economy of Import Substitution Industrialization. And I said, as I said before, uh, here the social integration dynamics and system integration dynamics. Really here, Chalar Kedar uses Habermas's distinction, you know, or actually so a sociological distinction. Giddens also uses this uh, social integration, system integration. Now, if social integration and system integration work to support each other, you know, uh, that's a country where, uh, that's a country where uh, economic development, workings of democracy, uh, uh, rights, uh, using people using their uh, political rights, social rights, you know, they go very well. But if there is a uh, conflict between the two, social integration and system integration, uh, uh, and then if there is a crisis in system integration, now in the economic uh, system and in the political system, these are two systems, if there is a conflict between them and between them, then the social integration, uh, 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 the private life, uh, the social life, uh, life world, Lebenswelt, Lebenswelt of, uh, of uh, Habermas or of phenomenological sociologists is damaged in that case. And, and that is what happened especially during 1970s. Uh, so here, uh, Democratic Party came to power in 1950. Uh, uh, bureaucracy, Republican bureaucracy, alienated parts of bourgeoisie and parts of, I mean, uh, a great part of uh, peasantry, uh, peasantry. So, uh, what what there was during 1950s is a struggle between populism, populism of Democratic Party, and bureaucratic revanchism, revanchism, page 141. You know this is uh, from Chalar Kedar uh, between two uh, parties, uh, bureaucratic revanchism of Republican People's Party and populism uh, of uh, Democratic Party. Uh, now, a Democratic Party is a 
petit bourgeois and market ideology. Whereas uh, Republican People's Party is a statist uh, ideology, uh, dominance of bureaucracy. Now, uh, so this led to the winning of uh, Democratic Party, winning the power. Now, in 1954 also, they got the power again. But after 1954, uh, populism, market uh, mechanisms, the, the, the economic systemic uh, functioning uh, started some dysfunctions and a third party, Liberty Party or Free Party was established. Uh, one of the founders was Sheriff Mardin, uh, a sociologist uh, I will be talking in the in the fourth year class and this year you know your fourth year friends will be listening to me when I talk about this and I talked about Sheriff Mardin last semester anyway now uh, uh, but uh, in 1957 elections uh, democratic party lost uh, most of its votes but still won uh, uh, the elections but this third party liberty party free party uh, uh, closed itself and this you know they, they were more liberal and democracy, you know, they were saying uh, to the Democratic Party, uh, don't go in the populist uh, direction, uh, you know, uh, in the extreme populism, uh, then which at, uh, at which time it becomes more restricting, restricting instead of more democratic. Uh, uh, so uh, there were uh, struggles between uh, Democratic Party coffee houses and Republican Party coffee houses, really, you know, the last few years of 1950s. Now, this uh, Liberty Party criticized that and they joined uh, uh, Republican People's uh, Party. Uh, so Republican People's Party regained some of uh, bourgeoisie and liberal intellectuals and also of peasantry. I remember uh, from also from uh, my own village. I think it was 1957 uh, elec uh, elections. Uh, so I should be uh, 11, uh, 10 years old, 11 uh, at most 12 years old. Uh, I remember that uh, a Democratic Party member, uh, actually he was no, later he was a Senate member, but at that time he was an MP, uh, MP uh, 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 who's close to my village, uh, Yatagan. And actually my name is from him. Uh, his name is Baha Akshit, came to my village. Uh, and my father and uh, Baha Akshit, you know, they know each other. You know, they were in the coffee houses. He's talking about a party program and why uh, they are right against Republican People's Party. But a friend of mine was from Republican People's Party uh, and he put Republican People's Party flags all over his body. Now, Bahakshit, the MP, you know, the uh, parliament, parliamentary member of Democratic Party at the time, saw my friend and said, smiling you know one flag was enough why did you put all these flags you know th th this uh, this is my memory you know it stuck into my memory uh, you know even 10 12 years old my friend is polarized you know in the village uh, and you know but it was still in my village it was democratic there were no fights but in some villages and towns, there were fights between them. Uh, uh, so how extensive was it, you know, uh, still we need uh, uh, research on that. And there are, uh, there are some research actually, uh, maybe 
I can give you some articles analyzing this period. But there are more analyzing more recent period, 1980, 1970, etc. Now this I am talking about 1957. Uh, so uh, uh, as you know, in 1960 there was a coup d'état, the first coup d'état uh, in 1960. So the uh, the system dynamics and uh, of economic system of political system and uh, life world lavage lavage world of people uh, 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 economic the political coming political ideological coming and influencing uh, the lavage world the neighborhoods and the villages and uh, economic uh, crisis uh, uh, so from 1960 onwards, there was a Republican People's Party coalition, uh, Democratic, the continuation of a Democratic Party. Uh, uh, in 1960, there was a new, in 61, there was a referendum and a new, uh, uh, a, new uh, a new constitution uh, was adopted. Again, my memory, I remember, uh, in the village, in the the, the square, uh, uh, main square of the village, you know, this is a population of 1,500, uh, 350, 400 households, you know, my village. Uh, and I am, at that time, 1960, a third year, uh, uh, G, uh, uh, the last year of junior high school, junior high school, or eight year, eight year of uh, primary and uh, or uh, primary education now presently, four and four, the eight year. Uh, and I remember talking about new constitution, you know, there will be a referendum before the referendum. And I remember defending, uh, <laughs> defending the constitution in 1960. Uh, and then, you know, there was a referendum and it won with 70% uh, something. Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, uh, that as a result of that constitution, this uh, uh, conflict between two systems, political system and economic system, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, civil society, let me say, civil society organizations like unions and other uh, democratic organizations. And they are called in Turkey mass democratic uh, organizations, uh, mass democratic organizations. You know, this increased, uh, you know, under this uh, more liberal uh, and more social liberal uh, constitution. Although still, you know, there is a state priority of the state, but in comparison to previous constitution, uh, more uh, area given uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, social dynamics, uh, civil society, and uh, civil society dynamics. Uh, so during uh, 1970s, uh, what Hirschman was talking about, you know, uh, uh, import substitution industrialization coming to an end, you know, uh, not anymore, uh, uh, no more places to expand, huh? no more places to expand. But, uh, 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 you know, there is dynamics. Uh, now the workers, uh, or, you know, there's a status granted to the workers and there, there are their unions and their associations and how, uh, uh, how the balance of classes established at social integration level was forced to split by problems at the system integration level. Now, this is, uh, this is a sentence really from, uh, from Chalar Kader, page 165. Now, 
he says here, uh, industrial development depending on imports of technology, imports substitution industrialization, and industrial inputs, import of technology and industrial import inputs, you know, available to foreign exchange, especially from workers working in the Germany. Uh, uh, now here uh, we can uh, we can uh, say to Emma, you know, uh, maybe Emma's uh, mother uh, uh, or a part of her family uh, migrated at that time to uh, to Germany, uh, and there were uh, money uh, marks deposited in the, in the Turkish banks, you see, uh, foreign, ex foreign exchange money. Uh, and hence, that was contributing to importing capacity uh, to import technology and uh, industrial inputs. You see, ex uh, import substitution industrialization uh, does not uh, uh, go into the creation of capital goods industry, creation of heavy industry, uh, heavy industry, and, and hence uh, it, became, it becomes dependent, really, you know, uh, theories of dependent development emerged during uh, 60s uh, and 70s, third world, third world development models, uh, how uh, the world uh, the dominant the first world dominating uh, the world as a whole uh, how uh, third world countries further development is being blocked you know as a student in uh, in the university you know i was writing about it uh, you know in the first semester i talked about when i was in, uh, from second year third year i wrote a book you know uh, uh, underdeveloped capitalism and its penetration into villages that is what this is what i talk about you see uh, so uh, now it, this is capitalism really when we come to 1970s and capitalism has periodic crises you know convective cycles you know that is every 50 years there's a major crisis at the world level but at the national economic level, there is also crisis. And in Turkey, there is almost every 10 year a crisis. Huh? Towards the end of uh, 1950s, there was a crisis and there was uh, a coup d'etat. Towards the end of 1970s, import substitution, uh, no, uh, towards the end of 1960s, there is a uh, uh, coup d'etat again in 1971, uh, 12th of March uh, coup d'etat. And then uh, from 1970 to 1980s, there is also uh, a crisis and there is 1980 coup d'etat. Uh, the, uh, the constitution that is made during that period is still with us, although there has been some modifications. Okay. so. Actually, capitalism has two types of crises. One is underconsumption, underconsumption, uh, that is insufficiency of market demand. Uh, the second one is de declining rate of profit or insufficiency of productive in investment. You see, in the case of Turkey, uh, this insufficiency of productive investment in uh, innovation, in uh, capital goods sector, capital uh, goods sectors. Now, import substitution policies before the second half of 70s were avoiding these, both of these. Huh? There was, you know, there, there was a protected market, uh, many of the goods that formerly imported are now being produced by new uh, uh, national, uh, newly established enterprises, industrial firms, uh, you know, their market is ready. Uh, there is no 
uh, under consumption crisis. Uh, but before, because of uh, foreign exchange uh, problems, you know, the uh, foreign exchange coming from workers in Germany or France or is not enough anymore. And uh, tourism was not that developed at that time. Uh, and there were no exporting of industry, the industry to be an exporting, export oriented industry. It should have invested in capital goods sector, technology produce, it should be technology producing. So it, it wasn't techno, import substitution industrialization, import substitution policies were not enough uh, to invest, to, to induce firms to invest in capital goods. Uh, so crisis because of the second one. And even, even the first one also, uh, uh, under consumption uh, was also uh, became a problem because uh, uh, you know there was not enough uh, income coming uh, uh, to various sectors. So uh, towards the end of 1970s, uh, that uh, that happened a crisis. You know. Uh, I already talked about state uh, enterprises, so I will not go into that, but uh, read those parts. Now, before uh, ending this class, I will go to that article uh, written by Sherket Pamuk, uh, Economic Change in 20th Century Turkey. Now, there's a question here. Is the glass more than half full? more than half full uh, and between 1914 and 2000. Now I will show you some graphs and I will finish that. Now this question usually, now when we say uh, glasses half full, uh, half empty. Now those who says glasses half full are optimists. Those who says, no glasses half empty and emphasizes the empty part is pessimists. Now, Shevket Pomuk is saying, is the glass more than half full? Now, maybe uh, Shevket Pomuk is uh, less pessimistic uh, than uh, uh, Çağlar Keydar. Although Çağlar Keydar wrote that in 1987, whereas uh, Pomuk Sherket Pamuk wrote in 2007. Okay. Now, Sherket uh, 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 Pamuk is presenting now a long term uh, uh, data, data, like he did, you know, uh, for Ottoman Empire, he presented data from 15th century to uh, the beginning of 20th century, 1913. Now, from 1914 to 2000, 20th century. Um, okay, here. Uh, uh, where is it? Article of economy, the per capita current uh, format. I think it is this one. Yes, it is this one. Here you are. Uh, let me get this larger a little bit. Okay, I know your patience is running, but let me show this. You see, this is social structure of Turkey. In order to understand that, you have to always remember in your mind, you know, you have to have from 1920s to 2020s, you know, that 100 year perspective, you know, if you can develop this perspective, that's really very good. Now I am enlarging this a, a little bit more. Uh, here you see uh, economic and human development indicators for Turkey. You see? Okay. Now, population was 17 million in 1913, 
and that was first world war uh, that's migrations 13 million remained in 1950 there was 21 million and in 2005 there was 72 million presently there is 84 million okay now share of urban population 500 thousand 5,000, no, 5,000 inhabitants in a settlement, the percentage, uh, it was 28% in 13, 1913, uh, and dropped to 24%. So it, it was less urban uh, than 1913, the last years of Ottoman Empire. Turkey was more urbanized, so it was less urbanized until 1950 but after 1952-53 it was 28 and by 1980 it was 44 percent urban and in 2005 68 percent and now especially as we discussed in the first semester there's a change of law which includes all villages as urban in 30 uh, greater municipality uh, provinces. Uh, so only something like seven, eight percent is rural, but that is uh, misleading, but still 85 percent, 80, 85 percent became urban. Now, share of agricultural labor uh, in 1913 was 80 percent it increased agriculture increased industry dropped in uh, from to in 1923 to 85 in 50 also uh, urban i mean uh, industrial uh, 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 agricultural labor was still 80 something 84 percent only in 1980 30 years later it dropped to 51 percent and to 34 percent in 2005 presently share of agriculture dropped to something like 20 percent 20 percent share of industry just the reverse as you can see in the uh, in the row uh, before that and then gdp per capita uh, with 1990 us dollars was 1200 in 1913 in Ottoman Empire it dropped to 7010 in 1923 after the war the war destroyed the economy uh, now it became in 1950 uh, 1600 4 uh, 1600 4000 and uh, $7500 this is it, dollars in 205 presently i will show i will show what happened uh, now as the percentage of uh, europe and united states it was 29 percent of uh, uh, us europe uh, gnp per capita 29 percent so a higher uh, percentage uh, now the divergence between Europe and United States and Turkey, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, did not close, but diverged. It is only 30%. Uh, it was 29 in 1913. Almost 100 years later, still the gap, the gap, uh, only 30% of per capita GDP of Europe and United States is Turkish per capita GDP. I don't know, I hope you understand what this means. Uh, but in terms of GDP per capita as percentage of world GDP, world as a, as a whole, now Turkey uh, is up to 1990 under world uh, GDP per capita, but in 2000, around 2000, it is above, uh, a little above 
117% of uh, world per capita GDP. You see, life expectancy, that is the really uh, face, uh, face whitening, you know, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, boast about this, you know, uh, you know, we really improved life expectancy at birth from 30 years in, in 1913 to 70 years. At, at present, it is 77, something like that. You, you, you study this in uh, demography. Uh, adult literacy also from 10% to 90%. <clears throat> okay, now this is uh, one table. Now I will show uh, one more or maybe two more, just a minute. Here, changes in human development index. Human development index is uh, where included the percentage of women working, uh, literacy rate, uh, urbanization rate. You know, there are so many variables. Uh, and, you know, this is for whole world, this is being calculated. A human Development Index, HDI, HDI, you know, uh, that was, you know, the highest is one, one. So it varies between zero and one. So Western Europe uh, was 0.58, almost half of, you know, one, 0.5, uh, close to 0.6. Now it became 0.935 in 2003, you see, uh, uh, Japan and uh, uh, Japan and uh, others also 0.9, uh, you know, you see all countries here, you can take a look and then you come to Turkey, you see at the bottom, Turkey, in 1913 was it was almost 0.2 then uh, in 1923 0.38 in 50 0.59 uh, so it is uh, in uh, 203 it became 0.75 uh, now it is better than nigeria which, which is 45 egypt is 65 but Iran, very close to Iran, Tunisia, Tunisia and Turkey, Tunisia is a little bit higher, as you can see here. You can compare, huh? take a look uh, at this uh, index. And before ending, let me show this, uh, you know, when it is a graph, it is better uh, to see. Now, these two are a share of agriculture uh, in GDP and labor force and labor force, share of agriculture and labor force. And uh, here, uh, okay, now, between nine, uh, nine, uh, 1910 and 2000, as you can see, uh, share of labor for uh, uh, share of agriculture in GDP was uh, share of uh, agriculture. This brown was something uh, around 40 percent. In labor force, 80 percent. It decreased. It decreased, as I said, uh, in 2000, uh, around. Uh, 40% and share in GDP also decreased, both of them decreased. Whereas GDP per capita as percent of <coughs> United States plus uh, Western Europe between in 100, 100 years between uh, 1000, uh, 1000 um, uh, 90, the beginning of uh, 20th century and the end of 20th century, 1900 and 2000. As you can see, Turkey is the red one here. 
uh, and uh, the share of, no, not Turkey. Uh, Turkey as share of Western Europe and United States. Turkey as share of Middle East. Middle East is the yellow one. Uh, now, uh, no, Tur uh, no, the yellow one is, uh, let me see now, Middle East, share of Middle East GDP per capita, Middle East per, as of US and Western Europe, huh? GDP per capita as percentage of United States plus Western Europe. So different Turkey, red one, yellow, Middle East, uh, green, uh, uh, gray, gray, uh, Africa. Africa is between zero and 10, as you can see, uh, so low. Huh? Uh, uh, whereas, uh, uh, for example, uh, Southern Europe, Southern Europe or uh, uh, Latin America, for example, the, uh, uh, the blue or uh, 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 the, uh, the blue, heavy blue color. No, not blue, but uh, let me see. Uh, uh, this one, this one. Now, I, I couldn't remember this color really. It is not blue, and this is Latin America. Uh, now, the, the blue one, the blue one is Southern, uh, now, let me see. Southern Europe and South Korea, South Korea, uh, okay. Now the one which is increasing the rectangles, blue with the rectangles is South Korea. You see South Korea uh, is increasing and Europe also, uh, Southern Europe, Southern Europe. Uh, whereas it is Western Europe plus US, the percentage of Western Europe and US, Southern Europe is increasing and Korea, South Korea is catching Southern Europe. Southern Europe is uh, Bulgaria, Romania, you know, those countries. Okay, now you can take a look. Uh, exports of GDP and imports of GDP, you can look at that too. Uh, An income distribution, income distribution uh, non-agricultural wages, the heavy blue one, and uh, agricultural value added per capita of non-agricultural wages, uh, the green one. Okay, now you can 